Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you're new. My name is Kristen, this is my booktube, and in today's video we're going to be doing a little book haul. It has been a hot minute since I have done any sort of book haul on this channel, and just because I haven't been posting about books that I've been buying, that does not mean that I have not been buying books. I have about 15 books sat here next to me that I have bought since the start of the new year or thereabouts, and I figured we should just sit down and kind of talk about them because I have got a whole new series, I've got several new books, I've ordered books from Book of the Month, I've added on books through Book of the Month, I've done some book exchanges with friends, picked up some book club books as well. So there are quite a few books that we can go through and just talk about a little bit. So yeah, let's just go ahead and jump into it, I guess. I want to give a little disclaimer before we do, though, that if you hear some rain in the background, that is because it is currently raining right now in Texas. It's not on your end, it's on mine. I am using a microphone right now so that hopefully it'll not pick up as much of that sound, but alas, if you can still hear it, that is what it is. Second thing is, if my chin looks a little red, it is because I have little Miss Sadie here with me. She is laying right here off camera, and we were playing a little bit this morning, and when she gets a little riled up, she starts swinging her paws, and she got me on the chin this morning. So I have a little bit of a red scratch mark on my chin. Just thought I'd give those two little disclaimers at the top of the video before we jump in. So yeah, go ahead and grab yourself a nice cozy warm beverage. For me at least, it is very fitting to have a nice warm cup of coffee because it is cold and raining outside. So yeah, go ahead and grab yourself a nice hot beverage and we can go ahead and jump into this little book haul. Alrighty, so I just counted and between the two stacks that I have here next to me, there are 18 books. Well, really there are 17 books, but for one of the series that I have, there is one book that is still in transit that has not gotten to me yet, but I'm counting it as part of this book haul because I have the rest of the series, I'm just missing this one book, and it'll be here on Monday. So we're just gonna pretend that it is here and that the set is complete, okay? I do have them kind of organized, I guess, basically into categories of where I got the books. And actually, I just spotted three more books over here that should be part of this that are not in my stacks. So let me go grab those and then we can jump into this. Alrighty, so correction. Now we have 21 books to talk about after I spotted those other three in the corner. So yeah, we have a lot of books to talk about. Let's go ahead and just jump into them. So yeah, we'll go ahead and jump in with a little book exchange that I did with some friends online. And in that book exchange, one of my friends sent me Normal People by Sally Rooney. This is a book that has been on my TBR for a very long time, like probably four or five years, and I just have not read it yet. So my friend Alexis has sent me this book, and now I feel like I need to bite the bullet and just go ahead and read it. I've heard great things about it. There is a series on Hulu, as denoted by this little Hulu symbol on the cover. But yeah, it's a pretty short book. I've been reading fairly long books recently, so this shouldn't be a difficult book to get through, and I just need to bite the bullet and actually read it so that I can get what all the hype's about. Then, right around the new year, a group of friends and I did a little bookish day where we had lunch and we went to Barnes & Noble and Half Price Books, and I bought quite a few books on that outing. The first one being Good Omens. This is a book that I feel like a lot of people are familiar with the title of because of the television series starring Michael Sheen and David Tennant. And I absolutely love David Tennant. I would watch anything that that man is in. I have actually watched quite a few things that David Tennant has been in just because I love David Tennant. I got into Doctor Who when he was the Doctor, he is my favorite Doctor, and I have loved him since about 2009, so I do want to watch the show Good Omens, especially now that it's actually been renewed. I don't know all the ins and outs of what went on with the TV show, but I do know that there was like one season years ago and then they just never made another season until fairly recently, it got picked up again, and they have now revived the series. 
So I feel like that is also a sign that I need to go ahead and read the book so that I can watch the series and get my David Tennant fix for 2024. So yeah, this was a book that spoke to me in Barnes and Noble. They were having a buy one, get one half off sale. So that sucked me in and this one was part of it. So now I own this book and I have no excuse not to read it and watch the show. I don't remember what other book I got for that buy one get one half off. So there is another book that's supposed to be in here but I for the life of me cannot remember what other book I got with that one because I thought it was the inheritance games but I already owned that one and my other friends bought that one to read as well. So I didn't actually purchase that book on that day, but I don't remember what other book I got as part of that buy one, get one half off. So there is a missing book that's supposed to be in here that is not actually in this pile. So moving on, on that same day that we went to Barnes and Noble as part of our little bookish day, we also went to the big flagship half price books in Dallas. The first one that I picked up was The Death of Mrs. Westway by Ruth Ware. So I have read quite a few Ruth Ware books before. I'm pretty sure I've read every single book that she's published with the exception of like two or three. And this is one of the ones that I have not read. I believe that I kind of started the audiobook like a year or so ago. And then I just never really listened past the first five minutes. And I do really enjoy Ruth Ware books. I don't really know much about this particular story, but I know that I like her thriller writing in particular. So when I saw it at Half Price Books and it was only like eight bucks, I went ahead and just picked up the physical copy because I have yet to find a Ruth Ware book that I just straight up did not like. So I felt like it was a pretty safe bet going ahead and purchasing this book. Next book I picked up was Nothing More to Tell by Karen McMahon. So this is the same author that wrote the book Sometimes I Lie and I read that book years and years ago when I was doing my master's dissertation. One of my friends recommended it as kind of a fun read to sprinkle in with my research reading so I didn't just end up hating reading by the end of it. And I read that book quite quickly when she loaned it to me. And this is another book by the same author. This is not a related story, even though the cover kind of looks like it is. I don't think this is directly related to One of Us is Lying. If I were to describe One of Us is Lying in just a few words, I would say it's like The Breakfast Club, but with murder involved. And so that was a really fun thriller to read. That was an interesting premise, you know, kind of a death in a locked room kind of whodunit because they're all in detention and one of the kids ends up dying. And so that was a really interesting read and I'm looking forward to reading another book of hers as well. The next book I grabbed at Half Price Books is another repeat author. This book is called Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister. And if you've been following me, you would know that I read Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister last year. Really enjoyed that book, thought it was a really interesting way to do a thriller with the whole time traveling backwards to try and solve the mystery. Totally not realistic or anything like that, but it was a very enjoyable thriller. I really enjoyed the way that she wrote it. I thought the plot twists were really good. So I'm excited to read another one of her books and see how I feel after reading this one. Like, was it just a one-off really good thriller or do I just really like this person's writing in general? We will find out after I read this book. So on a separate trip to Half Price Books, I did, yeah, I did pick up the first three editions of the Lore Olympus webtoon. So these are not your traditional like novel type books. I've talked about Lore Olympus before. This is a webtoon. So it's kind of like a comic series that I have read on my phone for years and they have started publishing the physical copies of the webtoon in recent years. And I saw the first three available at Half Price Books one time when I was there and they were only like 12 or 13 bucks a piece. So I ended up picking up all three. They are the hardcover version. And I just really enjoy the artwork in here. I really enjoy the story. And so I decided to go ahead and add the physical versions to my collection. I'll just give you a quick overview of the covers. So this is what volume one looks like and it has episodes one through 25 of Lore Olympus. Then this is the volume two one they had. It's a Barnes and Noble special edition and it has episodes 26 through 49. And here is the third edition and it has episodes 50 through 75. 
this is not all of the books that are out in this series they're to like volume six I think now so I am still behind but since I can actually read it on my phone for free I've just been doing that and then I think I'm just going to keep picking up these hardcover physical copies of the print versions just when I see them out and about if there's a good sale on them since I've already read them there's not really a pressure to complete my physical collection in a certain amount of time so I'm just gonna collect them here and there when I see them and when I think that they're a decent price. So I did order one book online in the last month or so and that was this book called Catacombs. I got the audio version of this book in a audible sale where it was like specific titles were two for one credit that kind of thing i have been listening to it i haven't finished it yet but i decided to pick up the physical copy just because the cover is pretty cool so this book centers around an archaeologist slash investigator type person named faye longcamp and this is not the first time that she appears, but I think I read online that you can read this book without having read other Faye Longcamp books and it will still make sense. Just because I haven't read other books in the series, there may be some small details that I miss out on, but the premise of this book drew me in so quickly that I did not wanna read the rest of the series. I wanted to jump straight in with this one. And that is because this book is about the discovery of catacombs underneath Oklahoma City. They're in like this big swanky hotel. Someone tries to detonate a bomb underneath the hotel and it opens up all of these tunnels for this underground city that the Asian population of Oklahoma City were basically banished to in like the early 1900s. At least that's what I've gotten so far out of this book. And they find some dead bodies down there. So Faye is there to try to help figure out what's going on with her archeological background. She's also worked with the FBI before. So this ain't her first rodeo. She kind of knows what she's doing. And I just saw catacombs, Oklahoma City, you know, underground tunnels being found when they thought they were just legend for years and it drew me in, so. I went ahead and bought it online. Alrighty, next up we have the books that I got from Book of the Month. So the first one I got was The Kingdom of Sweets. This is a Nutcracker retelling, and I think it's a little more creepy than like the Nutcracker play is, which to be fair, the Nutcracker play does have some creepy parts, like what's, what's up with the Rat King? That part's always freaked me out since I was a little kid, but I digress. So that drew me in with this book. This was one of the December 2023 Book of the Month picks. And so this is the one that I got for Christmas time. Haven't read it, but just the premise of it being a Nutcracker retelling really drew me in and I thought it was really interesting, especially because I do think that this book leans a bit more into the creepy side of the Nutcracker, but I could be wrong on that. In any case, a Nutcracker retelling sounded interesting to me, so I ended up picking it in December. Then for my January book of the month, I did Pick Up the Fury by Alex Michelides. If you've heard me talk about my favorite thrillers in any past videos, then you would know that the Silent Patient by Alex Nicolides is up there with my favorite thrillers. I don't know if it is my favorite thriller of all time, but it's definitely up there, that's for sure. And I also enjoyed The Maidens, not as much as The Silent Patient, I will say, but I did really still enjoy it. And so when I saw that he had another book available on Book of the Month for January, I had to pick it up and he is sticking with what he knows, keeping with the Greek mythology kind of themes. And this one actually takes place in Greece. I believe it takes place on an archeological dig of some sort. Okay, I could be wrong about the archeological dig part, but it does take place in Greece. And so the cover, the title, the author, it being in Greece, all of that stuff drew me in for this book and I made this my January pick. And then for my February pick, I ended up picking up The Mayor of Maxwell Street. And there were several books this month that really stuck out to me. I thought it was interesting that they had several historical fictions and historical thrillers on the docket for February. And that kind of did make it a little more difficult for me to make a decision. But this one drew me in because one, the cover's beautiful. Like I absolutely adore this cover. I think it's gorgeous. And then two, the little blurb about this book on Book of the Month said that it had to do with Prohibition era Chicago. And that just drew me in right away. And
And from that point, they had me hooked. I don't know much about Prohibition Chicago, but a historical thriller set in Prohibition Chicago sounds right up my alley. And this is one of the thicker book of the month books that I have. I think it's about 500 pages. But yeah, this one sounded really cool. And it is also a debut novel by a black author about a black woman in Chicago. I believe she's dubbed like the richest Negro in Chicago or something like that in 1921. But it just seemed very fitting for Black History Month for me to pick up this book in particular. And just everything about this book hooked me from the second that I saw it. So I had to make it my book of the month for this month. And the last book of the month book that I've gotten recently is Daisy Jones and the Six. I don't remember what month I added this book on, but I did add this book on fairly recently. And this was actually book of the year 2019. And this is one of the few Taylor Jenkins Reid books that I have not read in this little universe that she's set up. I do have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo right here, also in Book of the Month form. And I do want to get the other ones that I have read from Book of the Month too, so that they can all kind of match together with the Book of the Month covers and things like that. But yeah, this is a historical fiction. If you're familiar with Taylor Jenkins Reid's work, like The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Malibu Rising, Carrie Soto is back. And they all take place in the same kind of universe where all of these celebrities in these different books show up in the other books as well. And it's also interesting because the characters in the books are based on real celebrities. Like Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo was like loosely based on Elizabeth Taylor and other big Hollywood icons of the 30s and 40s. Mick Riva in Malibu Rising is kind of like a Mick Jagger type. Daisy Jones and the Six is kind of like a Fleetwood Mac kind of vibe from what I understand. So yeah, it just makes it a little more interesting of a historical fiction when there are like real life parallels that you can see between certain celebrities and the celebrities in these books. But yeah, this was the 2019 book of the month, book of the year. That's what this little symbol right here stands for. And I'm looking forward to reading it. I do know that there is a series out that has been out for a while about this, I wish it'd show, about this book that also stars Sam Claflin. And as I have stated in my Hunger Games series, I absolutely love Sam Claflin. So as soon as I finish reading this book, I'm going to be watching the show. Alrighty, and we have made it to the last section. And this is the biggest section of this little book haul that we have. And that's because I have purchased another Sarah J Moss series. Yes, that is correct. I am embarking on another Sarah J Moss endeavor and diving into another rabbit hole of the world building that she does. This time I have been peer pressured by my friends into reading the Throne of Glass series. As you may notice, they are not in order and there is one missing because I believe the sixth book in the series, House of Dawn or something like that, has not arrived yet. It's on its way, but it's not here yet. So that is the one book that we are still waiting on, but I wanted to still include this series because since I do have seven of the eight books, I figured I should go ahead and still include it because I have most of the books and they are books that I bought in January. They just haven't all arrived yet. <laughs> But yes, I have successfully been peer pressured into embarking on the Throne of Glass series. It's a daunting series. I did the math and if I read all of these physical books, it's over 5,000 pages. So if these are the only physical books that I read this year, I would hit my page goal just by reading the Throne of Glass series. I mean, just look at the size of this book. Like, so this book, Throne of Glass, is 406 pages, right? Compare it to Kingdom of Ash, which I'm not entirely sure of the order, but this is like the last book in the series, I think. Put them side by side. Let's, let's see. This is a monster of a book. This is 406 pages. This book is almost a thousand pages. It makes this book look tiny. <laughs> so yeah, this, this one specifically is going to be quite a daunting read. Let me tell you exactly how many pages are in here. It has, drumroll please, 980 pages. It's basically a thousand page book, but like it's got a good flop though. I really like these books a lot. I love the covers. I like how floppy the book is. I know that that's a thing for some people. Some people don't like floppy books, but when I'm reading a big book like this, especially, I want a book that kind of stays open that I don't have to fight or break the spine to get it to stay open. So 
I really like the aesthetic of the whole series. And yeah, I have not actually started reading Throne of Glass yet, mostly because I need to finish some of the physical books that I'm reading before I pick up another one. And believe you me, once I do that, I will start reading this book. I promise. <laughs> Maybe I'll even do a whole reading vlog surrounding it, but that would be a long reading vlog series because this series is a lot to get through, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So yeah, those are all of the books that I've purchased in the last month and a half-ish. And yeah, as you can probably tell, I'm running out of shelf space. My living room shelves are basically, not basically, they are full. And I did order another bookcase for my bedroom, but that order got canceled because I guess they oversold the bookcase that I wanted. So I still don't have a bookcase for my room, but Hopefully I will have that soon and then I can have a home for more of my books. But yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me on this little endeavor. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the books that I purchased recently. If you've read any of these books and you have some opinions that you would like to share with me, maybe you liked some of them, maybe you hated some of them, whatever feedback you have, let me know your thoughts down below. But yeah, I am excited for this new year to get into reading more physical books. That's kind of why I have purchased more physical books. Especially that's why I purchased the Throne of Glass series because when I read the Akatar series, I've always listened to it with audiobooks. And then the group of friends that I have that have also read Akatar read them physically and they said that that was a better experience for them. So that is why I wanted to give reading this series physically a try just to see how I feel about her writing when I'm just physically reading it and not having it read to me by a narrator. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and leave it a like down below. Let me know. You should also subscribe while you're down there. I put out a video every single week and I believe next week will probably be another reading vlog just because as I mentioned before, I have a lot of physical books to get through and the friends that want me to read Throne of Glass want me to read it like right now. So I need to finish other physical books before I can dive into a behemoth of a series like this one. So yeah, look forward to that next week. I think we have about four books that I'm over halfway done with. At least two of the four, I'm only like 100 pages away from finishing. So we should be able to get a nice little productive reading vlog going next week where I can hopefully finish all of those and move on to other books. But yeah, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and I will see you in the next video. Bye!